Solange Mujan joins me on the set to take a look at what the papers have been saying today. Hi, Solange. Hi, it seems like we may never know the exact death toll from coronavirus, but we have hit a tragic milestone in the world in regard to that disease. Yeah, and we may actually even have passed it if you take into account all of the unaccounted for deaths from COVID-19. But as the French paper Le Cro La Croix tells us, uh, the world is close to or is hitting that one million uh, mark milestone in the number of COVID-19 deaths. Now, the paper today pays tribute to the healthcare workers who make up on average 14% of that one million uh, deaths from the coronavirus. People who continue, uh, as Le Croix tells us, uh, to be on the front lines uh, and helping others us everyday citizens tackle uh, this virus. Now, the Washington Post is also covering this unspeakably tragic milestone with a series of charts, timelines, and portraits. It's a sort of look back at the unfolding of the virus, how people in different countries uh, sort of bore with this beginning news of its coming. Uh, and it, it is what the paper says was a trickle and now has become a torrent of deaths with no end in sight. The one million mark in deaths only accounts for those who directly lost their lives from coronavirus, but the disease has also caused many indirect fatalities. Yeah, including a number of suicides. Uh, the Chicago, Chicago Tribune today tells us that the number of military personnel who have committed suicide uh, has jumped by 20 percent among soldiers on the whole and by 30 percent of those who are in active duty. And the statistics show that the numbers were actually in decline until this past spring when they shot up again. And there are clues, the Tribune tells us, to why this has been, why there's been this jump. Longer calls of duty, more isolation of wounded soldiers, less psychological support uh, for those that need it. Uh, and that's because uh, psychologists have been spread thin because of the coronavirus. Solange, you've got a bit more of an optimistic piece, uh, this time about surviving, but in the environmental sphere. Tell us. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, this is a sort of feel-good one. Uh, it's from the conversation. It's about frogs in Australia. Uh, and frogs are among the most threatened groups of animals on the planet, and with the massive fires in Australia last summer, uh, many feared that they wouldn't, they didn't survive. But since the area is so great, they, there was no way of actually finding out until they started using an app called Frog ID. It had already existed prior to the fires, but it was used by thousands of citizens across the area to to, to record the sounds of frogs. And from those recordings, scientists now believe that nearly all of the frog species that were in danger that they thought may have died in the fires actually survived the blazes. All right, let's come to France now, where there's some political news that's being covered in the papers here. Nearly half of French Senate seats were up for grabs in an indirect election on Sunday. As expected, the right held its majority. But today, the left-leaning paper, Libération, is wondering who can help save the French left in the next election. Yeah, and Libération's page is actually significant for a number of reasons. Let's start with the most direct one. It, the headline reads, a woman could save the left, with a question mark at the end. Uh, and now this makes reference to, for example, the possibility of Paris's mayor. She could run it potentially in next, the next presidential elections. But it also, according to Libération, uh, points to the fact that most of the main parties are, are run by men. Uh, and that the paper, the paper is trying to sort of uh, show that uh, talks of Paris Parody, the uh, people talking about parody, hasn't actually been met by actions of actual parody. Uh, then there's the subtext. Now, this cover is nearly exactly the same as one that came out this past summer with men on it, with the headline, the left is coming uh, back to work. Unite if you can. Unite us if you can. Now, that cover created a lot of pushback because people were saying, wait, wait a minute, where are the women in this on this cover? Where are the female politicians? So Liberation said that today's cover is a bit of an attempt to sort of rectify the previous one. But some could argue that Liberation may have missed the mark again. For the headline doesn't read who can save the left, it reads a woman, une femme, and there's already been much debate in France actually about how professional women not uh, and not men are often uh, uh, identified first and foremost by their gender, not by their, their job or uh, their name, for example. Indeed. All right. Next, a bit of science news uh, for us. There's been a breakthrough that could get us possibly one step closer to living on Mars or on the moon. Yeah, setting up a, a space station is actually one of NASA's goals, whether it be on the moon or on Mars. But there's a problem. Natural resources are lacking on in these places. 
uh, and uh, and they would sort of be expensive to ship the things too. For example, it costs, for example, ten thousand dollars to just ship just one pound of mat building material uh, to the moon. But scientists may have found a, a, a first clue in how to deal with this problem. Wired tells us that Singapore University scientists have used simple chemistry to transform organic polymers chitin uh, into tools and even material to build houses. And on Mars, for example, there's a lot of this chitin because it's made from the ectoskeletons of insects and crustaceans. So the forgotten wrench, the two-bedroom apartment, that may be possible soon on Mars. Interesting. All right, Zolan, just to wrap up, you've got some fashion news that could fit into that category of so bad, it's good. Yeah, this sort of makes me cringe, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, maybe I could jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the cold weather. I'm, I'm going to be missing my, my sandals soon. Anyway, in the tradition of ugly, comfy shoes, celebrities have been wearing their Birkenstocks or their sandals with socks. The soccer star David Beckham has bent another fashion faux pas. He was recently photographed wearing socks and gym sandals. And as The Guardian tells us, this is the latest uh, must-have trend, they say, among some fashionistas. And not just German or English ones. The paper tells us that in these coronavirus times, comfortable things rule, and that includes uh, Birkenstocks or sandals with socks. Hey, it's all about keeping your feet warm in these freezing cold Paris days. Solange, thank you for that. Solange Mujan there with the press review. Thanks to her.